In this video, we're going to talk about the cylindrical coordinate system and how you can convert from cylindrical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So to start off, let's say that we have a point here in an arbitrary coordinate system. Um, we can figure out what the Cartesian coordinates are by simply turning these axes into x, y, and z axes. In this case, we can locate the point using just the two coordinates, x and y, so we don't actually care about z right now. We can also locate the point in polar coordinates if we turn this into the pole and we have a polar axis. So in the polar coordinate system, a point is defined by its radial distance from the pole and its theta value away from the polar axis. So again, we have two, two coordinates and they tell us where this uh, point is. Now, if we want to lift up the point some distance z off of the plane, it can look like this. And right here, this is the cylindrical coordinate system in its entirety. Um, there are three values, r, theta, and z, and they you can use them to figure out where you are in 3D space. Um, if I add the Cartesian coordinate system back, you'll see that both of these systems share this z value here. There's no special difference between the two, and really when we get to the final formulas, you'll see that there is no conversion, z equals z. But for now, I'm going to hide the Cartesian coordinate system, and we're going to look into why this is called the cylindrical coordinate system. So if we're looking just at the bottom here, let's imagine that we keep r the same, and then we rotate it all the way around. So theta can vary across the entire circle. What's going to happen is we're going to form a circle like this, and then as we change the z value, we can create a cylindrical shape. So the cylindrical coordinate system is good if you have a circular shape in a plane that you need to extend along a single axis. Um, and basically this diagram here just shows like why it has its name. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide some of this stuff and then we're going to bring back the Cartesian coordinate system. And then I'll show you what the coordinates of this point are in both systems. So here they are. In the Cartesian coordinate system, we have x, y, z. So we went this way, this way, and then up. In the polar coordinate system, we have r theta z. So here we went out some r distance, and then we rotated it around, and then we went up. So you get to the same spot in the end. It's just a, a matter of how you do it. Now, if we want to convert between the two coordinate systems, or say we're given cylindrical coordinates and we want to turn them into Cartesian coordinates, we can use these formulas. If you saw my video on the polar coordinate system, then you should recognize these two formulas, and that's because they're the ex exactly the same. If we take away this z value here, and we just look at this plane, then we're really just converting between the Cartesian coordinate system and the polar coordinate system. So x equals r cosine theta and y equals sine theta. Then when we add the z value, both coordinate systems use the same z, so there is no actual like conversion between the two. All right, so now what we want to do is take a look at an example here. Leave the formulas on screen. Um, in this question, we say plot 4, 2 pi over 3, negative 2, and express its location in rectangular coordinates. So we have this little angle value here, which is a giveaway that this is a... Um, cylindrical coordinate. So what we want to do is we're going to take this 2 pi over 3 and right, with 3 and we know that this is 120 degrees so we're going to come away from this positive axis here and then we're going to extend the line some distance r or 4 oops, and then finally we're going to drop down negative 2 along the z-axis so this is going to look like this and we'll end up somewhere down under the xy plane um, and this is where our point will be now if we want to figure out the Cartesian coordinates of this we just plug in the r and theta values into these formulas so x equals r cosine theta equals 4 cosine of 2 pi over 3. 
this is going to equal 4 times negative 1 half, and that's going to be negative 2. For y, we have y equals r sine of theta equals 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3, which equals 4 times radical 3 over 2, it equals 2 radical 3. And finally, z equals z, so I'll just write that again, and this is going to equal negative 2. So if we write all these coordinates out together, it's going to be negative 2, 2 radical 3, negative 2. And this is our coordinates in the Cartesian system.